continuing our discussion of the circle mirror here. So this was the last um, picture in part one. And the main players here, again, actin, myosin, and then um, the, and the actin, the thin filament. Up here you have these two additional regulatory proteins, troponin and tropomyosin. So our main players are continuing to be actin and myosin as the main contractile proteins. And then the regulatory, the regulatory proteins that are necessary are troponin and tropomyosin. So here... Another sort of anatomy summary here of the sarcomere and pink outline that would be the actin framework in purple. Those would be myosin molecules with the myosin head sticking up. And then you have the little titan um, springs in green that are holding the myosin in place. And here's yet another look at the whole thing. Same thing. A sarcomere is uh, the lineup from Z-disc to Z-disc. And in purple, you still see the thick filament uh, inside here. And then the thin filament, the pink, is sort of the outline of each sarcomere. And here you have more of a three-dimensional representation and this picture here really doesn't give any new information. You don't have to worry about the bands and zones and whatnot, the M line or A band, so that's not really that important for us. So here, the whole thing put together. One more time, the actin beads that are sort of strung together. And um, these are little spheres, like beads on a chain that are twisted up in two rows. And they're forming sort of this outer framework for each sarcomere. So going down this way. And then inside we have the thick filament protein, the myosin in purple, and the myosin heads that are sticking up here, um, ready to interact with, with actin. And they will only be allowed to interact with actin if the binding sites for myosin on actin are open. Well, how do we get the binding sites to be open? And so for that, we have to move the tropomyosin away. And the only way the tropomyosin is going to move away is if we are going to bind some calcium to troponin, because that will then um, open up the, um, tropo the troponin, and that will then move the tropomyosin away from these uh, binding sites for myosin on actin. So... Um, moving on here to muscle contraction in general. So a um, few terms that you should know, and we kind of had those in the lab already. Muscle tension is the term that we use for, um, to describe the force that's created by a, a muscle. Load is the weight or the force opposing a contraction. And then the contraction itself is the, cre uh, the creation of tension in muscle. Relaxation is the release of the tension. And the whole model that we will be discussing um, about muscle contraction is called the sliding filament theory. So that's something you should know, sliding filament theory. Okay, so here um, this is sort of a flow chart describing the um, events that are necessary uh, to lead to a muscle contraction. And so first we need to have a motor neuron that transports an action potential down all the way to the axon terminal of that motor neuron. And then we need to release neurotransmitter, acetylcholine in this case, and the acetylcholine binding to the um, postsynaptic membrane here, in this case the muscle cell membrane, that is then called exc excitation contraction coupling because this will lead the excitation from the action potential from the motor neuron to the contraction of the muscle fiber. So that's the link. The acetylcholine being released binding to the acetylcholine receptor on the muscle membrane and then that leading ultimately to the muscle contraction via calcium release and then uh, we will get the cross bridge cycle so that means the cycle of interaction of actin and myosin that we're going to be studying next that's called the sliding filament theory that ultimately leads to a muscle twitch and so here so for more time uh, line up of a few of those uh, sarcomeres again in pink the outline that's actin and purple the inside that's the thick filament that's myosin those are the main players and here uh, the regulatory proteins that are involved the tropomyosin and the troponin so 
Actin has these binding sites for myosin heads, and they naturally just want to latch onto each other. Well, the only way to prevent that is to block the binding sites for myosin heads on actin. And the way you do that is by moving tropomyosin along the length of these actin beads and blocking all of those binding sites. The only way the tropomyosin is going to stay in place is uh, when the troponin is holding it down on the actin beads. And so here you have the troponin. It's a little molecule, a protein that changes its shape when it binds to calcium. So troponin, main player right here. So the troponin right here that holds the tropomyosin down. The tropomyosin is this long skinny molecule that covers the binding sites on actin for the myosin heads. Okay. So, in the initiation of the contraction, you will need to start the whole thing with a calcium signal. Once calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and it will be released only if there is an action potential that released acetylcholine from the, so at the, neuro, at the neuromuscular junction, and then the action potential traveled down the T-tubules, and it opened the calcium gates. Now, there's an increase in cytosolic calcium levels. Once that happens, once that calcium is released, it will bind immediately to troponin. The troponin is this little brown thing, and now the green calcium is binding to it. And that event changes the shape of the troponin. Once the troponin has changed its shape due to bind, being bound to calcium, then the tropomyosin, this long skinny molecule right here, it will shift away and open up and expose the binding sites for myosin on actin. Immediately, when these binding sites are open, the myosin ha head will latch on to one of those and then pivot. So it will, that's called then the power stroke. And so it will push the actin in this direction. So it will move it towards the center on both sides in this case. Um, we can go here through the steps one more time. So the calcium level needs to increase in the side of so uh, the calcium needs to bind to troponin. That's step number two. And then the, the troponin calcium complex pulls tropomyosin away from the actin myosin binding sites, and then the myosin will latch onto the actin, and then we get the power stroke. So that's this pivoting of the myosin head, and the actin filament moves. Now, this isn't just happening on a single myosin head, but it's collectively happening on all of those myosin heads in this sarcomere, and then across all the sarcomeres where the calcium release um, happened, and then you get an active shortening of each sarcomere, which results in a muscle contraction. So here in steps, one more time, an increase in cytosolic calcium, so calcium being released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it causes it will bind to troponin and here the calcium binding to troponin so here calcium now binding to troponin and that causes the um, a change in the shape of the troponin that um, then allows the tropomyosin to move away and expose the binding sites for myosin on actin and as soon as these binding sites are open the myosin head will latch on to the actin and then pivot, and that's called a power stroke, and that will then move collectively with many of these myosin heads, it will move the whole sarcomere and many sarcomeres, and that leads to the shortening of the muscle overall. So here, putting it all together, how the cross bridge cycle works, as soon as the troponin has changed its shape and the tropomyosin is gone, and now we get the um, the latching on of the myosin and pivoting of the head, um, that's when you have these cross-bridge cycles that will continue until tropomyosin moves back in place and the actin-myosin interaction has to stop. So as long as the calcium concentration is high in the muscle cell, what's going to happen is that um, you will have this continuous cycle of an ATP binding to a myosin head. And that basically releases the myosin head from its previous position from the from the actin, 
and then it will basically charge up the myosin head it will basically go into this more straightened out position so it will be will be charged up again so here if it's pivoted like this it has no power but if you move it back it's like um, you know pulling back on a bow and arrow kind of thing you're charging the thing up so um, the ATP binding it releases the myosin head from the its previous actin interaction and it charges up the myosin head it powers it up and so then the um, hydrolysis of the ATP basically charges up this um, the myosin head and now it will latch on to a new position on the actin and then let's move over here and then it will just pivot again and sort of release that energy and as it's doing that as this pivoting motion happens then the actin filament will move into toward the center so in this direction once that pivoting has happened now the myosin head has released all of its energy and the only way to release it from the actin is to have a new ATP molecule that binds to it and releases it and charges it back up. So uh, this is known as the cross bridge cycle and it will continue until the calcium concentration in the muscle is low to the point where the troponin and tropomyosin complex moves back onto the actin and blocks the binding sites for myosin. Okay, so this was um, kind of a lot of information uh, make sure that you watch the videos uh, they're short video clips um, that bring all of this sort of um, in motion and um, explain it really well but please um, I would highly recommend that you watch um, the cross bridge cycle movie really all of the there's a set of three video clips they're short concise and um, um, you can watch these videos and, and learn how the neuromuscular junction the cross bridge cycle and the um, um, excitation contraction coupling of all all of this how that works now let's take a look at uh, this image right here so um, kind of a consideration here for you real quick so once um, this myosin head made its move and released the energy and pushed the actin filament now it has no more energy so what do you think is going to happen if there's no more ATP in the muscle what what do you think is this myosin head can do it's basically stuck on actin and the only way to get it off there would be another ATP but what if there's not another ATP around so here is the image that shows this kind of scenario so uh, basically the myosin head has no energy it's stuck on the actin and unless there's another ATP coming it's can't move that's known as the rigor state and basically I don't know if you've ever seen this but when animals die they go into something called rigor mortis it's the stiffness of death when you translate it from the Latin and what it means is that the last ATP was used up the myosin heads are stuck on actin and you can't make any more ATP because the muscle tissue is dying and so now there will be a time where the animal has the stiffness the rigor mortis the stiffness of death and that's due to the last ATP having been used up and the myosin heads being stuck on actin so here um, there is this tight binding in the rigor state and unless you have another ATP um, the myosin is just stuck there and can't you can't do much about it so um, you need that ATP in order to release the myosin head and charge it back up in this position. But uh, please watch the movie or uh, this video clip series um, that will explain it really well. So here, you know, one more time, uh, once the ATP binds, then um, the um, myosin head is released from the actin. It will be charged up and it's ready to bind to a new place on the actin molecule, release the energy and pushing the... Um, the actin toward the center of the sarcomere. So a couple more slides here to finish this up. So again, the myosin head here was latching on to a new place on the actin. It pivoted, released its energy, moved the actin filament, and there you go. Now the only way to get this uh, myosin head off of the actin, uh, well, you need another ATP. So here is the whole cycle back put together. And again, you can go through this here. The ATP has to bind to release the myosin head and um, charge it back up. 
once the ATP hydrolysis has charged up the myosin head, but it's basically you're transferring the energy from ATP onto the myosin head. You're releasing it from actin and charging it back up. Then the myosin head will latch onto the actin uh, molecule, a new place, and then it will pivot its head over here, and that's the power stroke, and it's releasing its energy, but it's pushing the, the actin filament closer to the center of each sarcomere, and that completes the cycle, and then we need another ATP to start over.